Welcome to the tech channel, everybody. It's me, Rich Payne, and I've given Doddy the day off. You know what? He's been buried in it quite a lot lately, and you know, he fancies a bit of a ride, so I've stepped in for him. Uh, fear not, we're going to be delving into the tech realms just as much, though. Today, we're actually talking all things bottom bracket. Uh, so we have two different types of bottom bracket with us today. We have this one, threaded, which screws into the frame, and the bearings are generally housed externally. And then we have this little bad boy, press fit, where the bearings are encased, if you like, in this nylon shell, and that is forced into the bottom bracket shell of the frame. You also have things like BB90, where the bearings are pushed directly into the frame. However, today, we're talking all things press fit, and we're gonna be looking at how to remove and install one of these correctly. The offender then, your creaky old grimy bottom bracket. It's been buried in there for years and you've just not really touched it and it's making some horrible noises. Why is that? Well, servicing these kind of bottom brackets by its very nature is quite tricky because it's a sealed unit, it's pressed in there. So the only way of getting at it is taking it back out. So over time, dirt and grime and crap like that can build up in there and cause the thing to sort of move ever so slightly and creak and groan. These noises can also occur if the bottom bracket wasn't installed correctly in the first place. Because the tolerances are so tight, if these things aren't put in dead straight or the correct retaining compounds or greases aren't used, well, then again, it allows dirt and water and grime to get in so that these things will start walking. So to start with then, what are we gonna need to carry out the task? I'd strongly not recommend laying into your beloved frame with a bit of wood, a hammer, and a flat-headed screwdriver, although you can get away with this, not ideal. If you can lay your hands on the correct tools, well, that is the definite way to go because the best tool for the job is the right tool for the job. Right, it's gonna get messy, so some latex gloves are highly recommended, along with some blue roll, actually. If you've got a bit of blue roll knocking around, it's always good to have. As for the actual tools themselves, well, here I've got a bottom bracket bearing removal tool. So what that is is a splined piece of metal, as you can see, you pull that through the frame, these splines compress, pop out, and then when you hammer them back through with this, what they do is create an equal force all around the inside of the bearing cup uh, so that it pushes it out equally, rather than sort of, like I said, if you were hitting it with a, a hammer and screwdriver, like tap, 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 this just heat nice and evenly through. I've got an eight mil for taking my cranks off, and my cranks need a five mil as well because they've got a pinch bot on them, much like a Shimano crank. I have got here, this is, the bottom bracket press. Now it's slightly different to a normal headset press uh, because it does have various attachments to it to fit perfectly inside of your bottom bracket depending on which one you're going to use. Uh, we'll dig those out a little bit later. If you're pressing in aluminium cups, then you're gonna need this, some alloy assembly compound. That's gonna stop anything reacting, sticking, or seizing together. Uh, we've got this, which is our primer. This is for our nylon cups going into our carbon frame. And then last but not least, our retaining compound. That's basically gonna help stick it in there and stop any kind of walking or creaking, hopefully, that way. Finally, what else we got? Ah, disc brake cleaner. Something that evaporates afterwards just for the final cleanup, should any grease and grime get anywhere, just to make things nice and tidy. Right then, you've got the tools, or as close to them as you can possibly get your hands on. It's time to get started on the bike, but we need the other side. Oh, perfect. So on this bike, I'm gonna need to start off by taking the non-drive side off first, and for that, I need my eight and my five mil. Now what you can do is drop the bike into the hardest gear so the chain's slackest. On this bike I've got a clutch as well so I'm gonna push that forward. It just makes pulling the cranks out a lot easier. There's no tension on the chain. On my Canyon Lux here, it's a set of rotor power meter cranks which require an eight and a five mil Allen key to take them off. With the five mil, I'm gonna undo the pinch bolt and then with the eight mil, take the main bolt that holds the crank on. I'll slide the crank off and then with the spacers and washers that are behind it, I'll lay them out in order on the workbench so that I know exactly how to put them back on. So with that dropped all the way down into 12, if you've got a SRAM mech, push that cage forwards, lock it out. That's gonna make that chain nice and slack. Look, if you've got a Shimano mech on there, undo the mech, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna take all the tension off of it. Now I've got a little chain device on here, so I'm gonna just undo that, pop it up out of the way, just so it makes getting the chain on and off a little bit easier. And then, hey presto. Off she pops, hanging freely. Now, in an ideal world, the crank would come out nice and easily and just pull straight out. Ugh, not happening today. This is where your mallet comes in. I've got a nylon ended, so he's got a soft ended one. Don't be laying into it with a lump hammer. And I'm just gonna persuade her. And out she pops, look. Almost, hang on. 
Ta-da! Cranks out then, and it did take a little bit of persuasion, but what can we see? Well, the bearings themselves actually run still pretty smooth. It is, however, a little bit grimy back there. You can see from the backside of the chainring here, and also this seal for the bottom bracket that it's pretty wet, so obviously there's been water ingress, and there is grime and grit in there as well. Like I've said, that can work its way in, and it has. So, we're gonna clean this lot up, we're gonna pop this out, make sure everything's clean, and then pop it all back together. Cup removal time then, and this is where this specific tool really comes into its own. Like I said, it's gonna slot behind that cup and push it out nice and evenly. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I'd strongly recommend it. If you are going down the hammer and screwdriver route, then I really, please just be careful. You can gouge the inside of your frame, you can damage the bearings and the cups, if you like, if you are gonna be pressing them back in. So just do be really careful. Right then, we'll slot that one in there like that. Pull it through and you'll hear it click, bingo. That means it's located properly on the other side of the, uh, the cup. Now when you're hammering it out, watch out because these things can tend to fire across the room. So just put your hand in front of it. If you want to protect your hand, you could have a rag there instead. And we're going to start laying into her. So the cup's nearly out, a few little taps and Bingo, she's out. Pull that one through, slot it through from the other side and repeat the process to get the other cup out. Hear the click. Ta -da. Diagnosis time then. The old bottom bracket, well, it came out fairly smoothly. So the retaining compound, uh, and the primer actually did its job in there before and allowing this to still be removed without tearing into the frame. But as you can see, this is very wet and there's a lot of water inside the bottom bracket shell there as well. Having a look at the shell itself, there's no damage to the carbon, there's no scoring, there's no signs that anything was installed incorrectly. So it really is just a case of the weather doing its job over time and needing a bit of a tune up really. So I'm gonna make sure everything's cleaned, the shell's nice and clean and dry before I start to press anything back in. When cleaning out the bottom bracket shell on the frame, just use a bit of blue roll to give it a good wipe around. This should do the trick just fine. Try not to use anything too abrasive or rough as this could actually damage the frame. And the same goes for the bottom bracket. Give it a good once over, checking everything ready for the grand reinstall. Just to eliminate absolutely every possible chance of creaking then, it's well worth, if you've got a bit of time, taking the chain ring off as well. So undo this lock ring on the back, whip it all off, give it a jolly good clean everywhere and assemble. That way you know that there is no dirty parts going back together and there's no or absolute minimal chance of creaking. So when it comes to pressing it back in, then you've checked everything over. It's clean, tidy, ship shape. There's no damage to the frame or the cups themselves. There's a few steps that you need to go by. Now today we're pressing our bottom bracket into a carbon frame. Now whether you're pressing in a new one or the existing one back in, there are a few stages and bits of prep that you're going to do. First up, it's an adhesive primer. You're gonna paint that either directly onto the shell of the bottom bracket or the bottom bracket itself. And that's going to give a good key for this stuff here. This is our retaining compound, which is actually kind of like a, a thread lock, if you like, to hold it nice and in place. But like I said, this stuff goes on first. and It takes about 30 minutes to dry. So I'm gonna paint this on. And in that time, you could, well, bake a cake. So the primer's in and it's very nearly set. Now the primer is very, very, very important because it essentially stops this, the retaining compound, from gluing your bottom bracket, your nylon cups uh, or your plastic cups to that carbon frame. If you don't use it, then you risk very much damaging the frame badly, as in pulling actual shards of carbon out because it will glue it together. If you are going aluminium into aluminium, then this is what you're gonna need, an alloy assembly compound, and that stops the metals reacting and fusing together, essentially. But Always check with the manufacturer what they recommend because there's lots of different schools of thought out there on what you should use. Some people still use the adhesive primer even on the aluminium to aluminium. So really have a little look, see what the manufacturer recommends and just make sure though that you use the right stuff, whether you are aluminium, aluminium, aluminium to carbon, nylon to carbon, make sure you use the right compound for the right stuff. Crunch time then, and it's pressing the bottom bracket in, and that is where this little beauty really comes into its own. It's a dedicated bottom bracket press. 
If you don't have one of these, which I'll be honest, most people don't, you could use a headset press. Uh, it works almost just as well. The only difference is, is it doesn't come with these little beauty, these adapter cups, which sit nicely inside the bottom bracket. And you can see it sits flush. There's no wiggle there. So it presses it in evenly and straight the whole time. Like I said, bottom bracket press, well worth it. If you're gonna go down the hammer and wood route, then, oh Lord, I would be blooming careful because as soon as you start whacking that thing in one, if you don't do it nice and straight and evenly, you can cause some proper catastrophic damage to the frame, even splitting it I've seen in the past. And that is something you don't wanna do because warranty will not help you there. And if it goes in wonky, well then eventually it's gotta find its way in straight and flush. That's gonna be at the expense of what we call walking, where the cup sort of wanders top and bottom like that to find its place to sit properly. And then you're just gonna have gaps in there where creaking will occur. Don't forget, obviously, retaining compound, that's gonna be applied directly to the cup. We'll just dab it around here. There it comes. It's fairly thick, so it will just go on nice and easily all around there. Sorted. Cool, I'm gonna assemble that up on the press now and we'll get them squished in. Once applied, pop the cups on their correct side of the bottom bracket. Sometimes these aren't side specific, but just check first. Slide it through and then attach everything, making sure everything's nice and straight so it tightens up evenly when pressed. It should be looking fairly smooth as it goes in, but be careful not to over tighten and potentially split the bottom bracket shell. Bish, bash, bosh, then you've done it. Well done. Congratulations, everybody. That press fit bottom bracket is exactly back where it should be. All that brand new one is in and your bike is running creak free, smoothly and ready to shred. But we've still got to reassemble our bike. We need to get the cranks and everything back on. And well, once all that's back on, it should hopefully look a little bit like this. Oh, well, there we have it. Back together in one piece and working great. Ready to hit those trails and what a lovely bike it is. But that's it from me on the tech channel. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gents. I hope you're now clearer on removing and reinstalling press fit bottom brackets. It's been real great fun to be on the channel today. As always, why not give it a little subscribe? Let me know what you thought down below in those comments and I will hopefully see you for another tech video soon. Cheers, everyone.